Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's Lucid, and we're back with turn 66. I am missing turn 65. I have a folder where, you know, I keep my turns in folders for turn 65, um, but it's empty. So uh, we had a turn thief get in and uh, steal it. It certainly couldn't be the case that I forgot to save it in there. Uh, however the case, um, we may have missed a little bit of fun with man because uh, the war with man is raging and man is doing some cool shit. Um, but whatever he did last turn, we'll be reacting to it this turn, so uh, hopefully we don't miss too much. Um, cast Record of Creation for our Record of Creation Fiends. Didn't find anything, sadly. Uh, cast Raven Feast, got seven Death Gems. Um, hmm. Scrying Pool? That's our, uh, that's not a sight-searching thing. That's just letting us see a province. Man Magic phases on to us. Let's see what he's bringing. Okay, we've got a pile of snakes. We've got a bunch of Saramancer Whites. Uh, man has a Magister Arcane. Ooh, buddy. All right, we're, we're seeing it. That's probably going to be the title of this episode. And we have a Phoenix Pyre Golem. These things are pricey as hell. They're very expensive, but they are super fucking cool. Um... So the idea, and they're a little busted, especially in Dominions Enhanced, where these are like workaday commanders. You get like a dragon that comes with a fire path that's mindless. The thing that's significant about golems is that because they're mindless, it's hard to do the things that would normally get through soul, uh, through um, Phoenix Pyre, like Soul Slay. It's also just a pretty good chassis. But the fact that you can't Soul Slay it um, means it's very hard to get through. Um... So um, he's got a few more artifacts on here. He's got these boots, which give a tremendous amount of reinvigoration, 10. And uh, he's got an athame to help with reinvigoration as well, because this has lifesteal. Um, and then he's got an ember for a ton of resistances. And these, a lot of times you want to put brands on golems because golems have trash attack. It's one of the reasons the themes aren't great, but here he's not really doing it to kill things, it's just to get a bit of fatigue back every once in a while. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the, the theme, I, I, are our guys, I can't remember, I think they're lifeless. Yeah, the theme isn't going to work on them, so the theme is maybe not a great pickup here. Um, but the Emperor's going to do a lot of AoE damage. I think this can proc Blood Vengeance, which, you know, isn't amazing, but, um, all things together, just the fact that he has 10 Reinvigoration and uh, Phoenix Pyre is going to make this guy very hard to kill. Uh, he's also got a lot of MR, so uh, it's 23 now. He's probably going to do turn 1 Anti-Magic or uh, whatever you call it. No, turn 1 Phoenix Pyre. And then this guy came in to cast Iron Warrior, so his protection is now up at 29. This is a Fluffing Mage. Banefire is already starting to come down. We've got Astral Shield and presumably Fire Shield and... Res did they do... No, he hasn't cast it yet. Presumably Resist Magic, I guess, next. Oh, that's really strange. He should have cast Resist Magic. It's possible the other guy was supposed to do um, <coughs> Iron Will. But uh, this is all just from the gear. This, the plus six you see is from this and from this. So he could have cast Resist Magic again, but he chose not to. He's now wading into melee. Um, now we have a few ways to kill him. We can kill him with our Worms, who will eventually kill him. We can kill him through the Blood Vengeance procs with Fire Shield, which is going to be happening a lot. Uh, basically, every time they attack, they'll take damage from Fire Shield, and the Fire Shield will trigger a Blood Vengeance proc. This is one of the situations where having four more MR would be really nice. Um, but we've also got people that can cast... Uh, uh, Banefire, which will blow him the fuck up, and uh, so will Disintegrate. And I believe we also have Smite. But right now they're mostly making Skeletons. Uh, we have the first death, which it looks like it was triggered by a Banefire here. Got another Banefire going off, and he was hit by it. And he dies again. Looks like to a uh, that might have been to a Disintegrate. Uh, but this guy is only at 13 Fatigue, so we've got a long way to go. And we're going to pick up the battle speed here, because this isn't about to be over. Um, now this Golem, all things considered, is probably 100 and... 
Uh, empowered in fire, so that's 50. The golem itself is 30. Um, the gear, 25, 40, uh, 50, 70, 75, probably is 20. So that's almost 100 gems of gear. And then the empowering. Uh, and then the golem. So we're, you know, 175 gems. It's a very expensive thing. But this is one of the things that is capable of wiping supported armies. The downsides of this, though, are you almost always are going to get a, an unbearable number of afflictions. Um, and that's going to make it a lot harder to keep using your Phoenix Pyre Golem repeatedly. You can swap the gear off, but a lot of the cost of this, you know, half the cost in this particular case is tied up in the gear. The other half is in the Golem chassis itself and in the empowerment. Um, and you may still be able to do Phoenix Pyre after getting muted, but you won't be able to do Magic Phase very easily, like Teleport, which is how this fight started. Um, the Imps are also providing a pretty good distraction. Our mages do like uh, Drain Lifing them. Um, and Banefire is causing a fair amount of friendly fire. You can see a lot of our worms are decayed. Uh, he's still only at uh, zero fatigue. What's actually going to happen, if I recall, is the battle's going to time out. Um, and he was the attacker because, uh, you know, he magic phased on top of me. And uh, because this guy didn't even get close to killing all my guys in the amount of time, which, you know could have happened in theory if it were maybe if you put up like solar brilliance or something there could be a chance but uh golems disintegrate when the battle times out so now he's routed um this some of this logic may have changed uh in dominion six and stuff because they made it now where you can't route with morale 50 um so i'm, I'm not sure how this this would probably play out a good bit differently but anyway um, once that process triggers where the, the golem starts dissolving because it's routing because of the turn timer, which should happen around 90, it may take a few turns to proc after that, but once that process starts, Phoenix Pyre does not protect you, <laughs> and the golem just kind of blows up. So we didn't, weren't actually able to permanently kill it. It had too much reinvigoration. Um, and yeah, it killed a fair amount of stuff, 50 Tomb Worms. But when you look at the actual trade, he got a White Mage... You know, which for me is eight gems and like 200 gold. And he got 50 Tomb Worms. It's not a very good trade. Not a very good trade. But he's doing what he can. Uh, these are the tools he has. This is a very strong tool to be able to use. Um, other types of armies this would have wiped. Um, potentially Ulm it would have done better or worse against. Ulm has, can maybe do like opposition or something. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, anyway, it didn't work there, thankfully. But very cool. Uh, we convert more. Uh, we had some assassinations take place as well. Um, these assassinations, so we won both battles here the previous turn. You know, we're missing a turn here. So we went and moved these guys on top of this. We I think we missed a cool turn. This is where the golem came. I think the turn before, there was a, uh, like that death, um, the, the air empowered lich. Um, I think he, they were here the turn before and we managed to kill them, but they had like a really cool attack they did. I think. Um, but yeah, anyway, we moved on top of this fort immediately after, uh, cause we're trying to get as much of this war wrapped up before shenanigans break out with Arco and, uh, and Arco and, uh, Arethia. So anyway, there's assassination attempts. Here we have a Vampire Lord versus a Queen of Air Elementals. And Vampire Lords with... The, so this Vampire Lord has a Black Heart. Which one of the kind of cheap things... Not cheap. Vampire Lords are expensive. But it's one of the things you can do. Um, she's got a Ring of Returning and is Air 6. Uh, she's going to be fine. She went a little overkill here. But uh, it did successfully empty out my, uh, my gym reserves for her. Uh, and then she ran into a, a, this is a special summon man can get. Uh, and oftentimes you want to use these as wailing wind casters in your army because they have the right paths for it. Uh, but yeah, now they're doing um, assassin duty. 
and uh, Phantasmal Army, and then Thunderstrike. Also, just Water Elementals don't do great against Queen of Air Elementals because they're Ethereal, which is one of the best blocks to Water Elementals. So, yeah. She wrecked them. Then this person got attacked by an Assassin. Um, and this we may or may not lose. Oh, it's got a lifelong protection. We're probably going to lose this one. Yeah, and it did Blessing turn one. Even though Blessing is really good on this chassis, uh, probably still want to do Skeletons and hope that delays it for a turn. But really, I think the there was no way this person was going to live. Against the Bottle of Water only? Maybe. Because um, I think they also did Air Elementals. Um, there's a small chance we survived that, but against... Air Elemental, Bottle of Water, and a Lifelong Protection, it's not happening. Um, and then we get assassinated here. So man, it, man has some cool shit that they're doing. Um, I mean, they were prepared for this, and they had layers, oh, and this guy was successful here. Uh, I killed one of my Saramancers. So, um, and then they got another shot at Thuella. And best case here, unless they disintegrate her, is really to send her back. She's out of gems now, though. But she does have Shockwave. Um, and he did cast Disintegrate at her, so she had... She passed a, an MR check or die, um, where she would have lost all this gear. But I think only one. And with 23 MR, she was pretty well set up. We did have an MR kit on her as well. <coughs> uh, if we look at her kit... You know, she has this, which gives uh, 2 MR, and she had this, which gives 4 so that's a lot of bonus MR. Um, so this is, I would say this is like very high level play from man. Um, yeah. These are very kind of sophisticated and high commitment um, assassination attempts from man. Um, and we kind of are lucky because we had a Thuella here and she did get prioritized more than the other Saramancers and stuff. We had a fair number of commanders, but it's like, there were probably like 10, and she got targeted three times. So it's pretty unlucky for them. Um, we did have people on guard commander though too, so it's possible we, uh, we also got a little bit unlucky in terms of, like this one we lost, we didn't have anyone show up. So uh, that's a consideration. Um, but yeah, so five assassination attempts. I think they won all of them that were not against Duella, uh, which was two. We lost a White Mage and a Saramancer, uh, so they will be missed. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was pretty solid. Um, I think, yeah, we, we kind of got lucky and unlucky here at the same time. Probably more lucky than unlucky, though. Um, this, I wonder if this was a gym bait. So they're just summoning some elementals, and it did gym bait me. Okay. They killed a fair amount of long dead. 50 long dead? Uh, not in, not, that's not insignificant. Uh, and then coming down, we've got a battle here. Um, let's see where this is. Battle here where we're raiding. This is our uh, Pokemon go Golem. And then we've got... Uh, here we run into man's thrice horned boar. I believe he was doing earthquake. Yeah. And he's got a ring of returning. So he earthquakes, triggers blood vengeance, and that sends him back. Is this worth it? Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I'd say it's worth it. Kills a Saramancer. Kills 50 chaff. You know, it's not amazing. But it was really cheap for him. It cost him four gems. Um, yeah, we th there's our little play with Ulm. What's, what else is going on here? Uh, Bandar Warriors. Here's a... I think this is the throne we're storming. Batala doesn't have much here, but this is our full army. This, this army here is really for defending <laughs> this throne from the birds. Not really from... It's not super worried about Patala itself. It's worried a lot more about the birds. Um, Pangea is also, by the way, on top of this fort. So 
I think there's still an army we get, uh, an army battle. I think the Patal army's still inside. So we'll get to see hopefully one more really cool battle between these two uh, and their epic showdown. Uh, we're claiming this throne. We're casting record of creation here because, you know, hey, it's a throne. Um, I, we need to be building a temple as well. Um, but coming up and just looking at the, the landscape here, um, we're on top of Man's Fort and we've popped it and we're going to be storming it. Um, this is really nice for us for a few things. It's because man has been doing a lot of returning bullshit. Like the god here returned with Earthquake. Uh, he's been hitting Ulm with a lot of uh, like uh, Wind of Death casters. Oh, I haven't. He hasn't been doing it against me. I mean, I have an unaging bless and I'm using Undead. It's not going to be a great spell against me. And I'm high MR. So, not a very good spell against Satis. It is a very good spell against Ulm. And man has been using it to great effect. And he's been returning the caster to the capital. As soon as we take the capital, the, all the returning bullshit shuts down. And that's going to be happening hopefully this turn. Um, this army is pretty much the same. We've got Skeletal Legion. We've got some Banefire Spam. These guys are all on advance and cast to deal with the god. Rigor Mortis, Army of Gold. Um, so we've picked up Alt-9. Um, these guys get really spooky at 20 protection. Uh, yeah, Divine Blessing, Anti-Magic, Rigor Mortis, Fog Warriors. Uh, I think we've turned off Mass Flight, strangely, which I think I would want on for a cap storming, but for whatever reason, we have it off. Um, and we're storming this fort as well. So we've been playing really aggressive. Um, once this battle was won against man... Uh, we moved, I think, one of the armies here, and we uh, we moved another army here. So the movement after this, the battles were taken here and here were whoop and whoop. And then this next turn, we finished the siege here while getting assassinated and moved the main army on top of Man. And Man probably was hoping, thinking, that we would move everybody here on this fort, and then he would get to plink at them with these assassins. Um, and so he probably has all the assassins here. I doubt there's any assassins here in the capital, but if so, there's only one turn he's got to, to do some assassinating. And like that, I think we have only got maybe one more turn until the nap ticks down with, uh, Arco and Arithia. Um, the other weird thing that has happened, and this is really important for this turn, is Calum has moved in to start vulturing. And furthermore, uh, because Calum is a very diplomatically savvy player, uh, he let us know he was doing it and let us know what he wanted. And a lot of the spoils that he wanted were going to be stuff that uh, that that was like going to be mine. It was stuff that Alm and I had already partitioned up man, and it was going to be my stuff. I was like, that's not super cool. And we also, Alm and I don't really want Caleb getting it because we know Caleb's going to throne rush. And so Caleb asked for things. He wanted... All of this, I think. And then he wanted a snake down to here. Like a little, like a limp, phallic thing just drooping through here like this that was in range of this throne. And you're like, dude, that's kind of obvious. But uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll probably go th for throne soon. And we're like, okay, duly noted. So anyway, the whole world is on like bird throne alert. At the same time, it's kind of in everybody's interest to, like, even if the birds are going to go for a throne rush, it's kind of in everybody's interest to, like, finish putting man down, including the birds, um, before, like, we start fighting each other. So that's kind of the phase we're in. <laughs> but we have shared that with Arithia and with Arco. Like, guys, throne rush is actually in imminent. Here are all the provinces Caleb wanted. Um... Please be careful about all inning me. Like, I, I haven't asked for a... To, I think I, Arithia and I might have come to terms. But Arco and I definitely haven't. Um, and, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm not even really trying to ask for it. But it's like, there is a throne rush happening, guys. Like, let's just be a little cautious about it. And make sure you're leaving enough stuff. And they have assured me they have enough stuff to protect their thrones from Kalim. So, um, that is... That will help me rest easy. Uh, but anyway, that's what's all happening. There's not actually much left for us to do in this war against man. This fort, Utgard, 
is going to be, which I felt like man just recently got, um, is going to be under siege by Ulm, but Ulm really has been taking a fair amount of attrition from all these winds of death attacks. And uh, so he's kind of getting ready and mustering troops and trying to get the proper army together to deal with it. There's a few things he's having to do. One of the things you want to do against Wind of Death is have a turn one anti-magic caster. But anti-magic has the exact same cast time as uh, Wailing uh, Wind of Death, which is 150. So if we come down here and look at anti-magic, this also is 150. So what you end up, it's like a dice roll, which one goes first. So what you tend to end up wanting is multiple anti-magic casters doing turn one casting, which for Ohm is actually kind of easy. You just put a clam of pearls on one of your illuminated ones and they can do, or one of your members of the second tier, uh, and then they can do it. So yeah, any one of these guys with a clam of pearls can do a turn one cast. So he wants like three of those with the army so that he's very likely to get anti-magic off before wind of death. But he has other things he's doing like getting more demons and things like that. Um, to make this easy. He's also, I think, plinking man with uh, remote assassinations, maybe. But uh, it's fair to say, the takeaway from this is it's fair to say at this point that I'm about done with my war with man. And Ulm is just getting started. Or not started. He's just working on finishing it. Um, he still has several major man armies yet to fight. And he's taken significant attrition. So that's where we are in the world today. Let's go ahead and look at the next turn, turn 67. All right, turn 67. Uh, we've done some aroused hunger casting. Where, where did that go? I'm not actually sure. Maybe we did it here? Oh, yeah, we did it here just to dilute assassination attempts. Because uh, remote summons will happen before assassinations. So... Uh, a Dire Portent has also gone up. Let's see what this one is. The Well of Misery has been cast by Live Action Little Mermaid. It looks like we have Well of Misery being cast by Arco, taking it from Caleb. So Caleb was also, as you've, as you've noticed, stopped sending us gems. So he kind of like protected us putting it up. But I think as the game goes later, he's been thinking like, okay, I'm going to stop paying the protection money. So they can't overcast it. But I think he's getting all the resources he needs ready for a throne rush. So he's not really worried if somebody overcasts it that much, I don't think. Um, Raven Feast. Did Record of Creation work? Nope. No new sites from Record of Creation. Uh, call the winds, arouse hunger, arouse hunger. So we did a fair amount of arouse hunger casting. Uh, a rather poor conversion here. Uh, the assassin battles, we lose another Saruman. So this one had a uh, tombworm guards, and here we had a vampire squaring off against the assassin, but we had tomb tombworm guards. And um, oh, here we see. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Because, you know, we were talking about how Wither Bones is a good counter to Satis. Uh, here we get to see Wither Bones in actions. Paralorn <laughs> just gets wrecked. So, yeah, that's that. Um, there's only one assassin left, I think. It's this uh, Banshee. But this is the tough one. This is the one with uh, a lifelong protection and air gems for air elementals and a water bottle and some basic armor. Um, yeah. This is a tough one to kill. This is by far and away, I think, the hard... I mean, maybe there was another one like this, but there certainly weren't any harder than this, I don't think. Um, we got hit by some Blackhawks. I think Calum is storming one of Man's provinces here. Again, these provinces he's negotiated for, he doesn't waste any mage turns. Uh, and then we have a battle. We are storming the Fortress of Man, and let's see what Man has inside. He's got his god. He's got a pile of Magister Arcanes. Uh, he's got a Bloodhinge Druid. He's got a pretty high level Air Mage with a high Tomb of Power. This is a very nice artifact. Um, and I don't know if he has a dream. I think these are probably the Air Liches too. Yeah, this is the Wind of Death Lich. This is the guy that's been plinking around, causing Ulm untold misfortune. And here's another one. So he has two of these air liches here. 
Uh, he probably was thinking I would... I don't know. Actually, I've been storming right away. So cast Wind of Death. Our guys are all Fog Warrior. They're all Skeletal Legion. They're all Army of Gold. It's Darkness. It's Rigor Mortis. It's a very tough day for everybody who is not a Tomb Worm right now. I'll turn on Team Colored Square so we can see a bit easier. We barely made it through the gate, but not enough where we can really push through. Um, they've summoned a fair amount, but we're routing a lot of people with Wailing Winds here. Or I think that we don't have Wailing Winds. <laughs> what am I talking about? People are just routing. I, I don't know. It could be they're hitting these guys. And that's one of the things, too. Sometimes you'll kill mages from them hitting and having Blood Vengeance, you know, damage them and kill them. The other time is sometimes you'll hit them and then they'll just damage themselves a tiny bit. But that's going to cause a morale check and then they'll run. And uh, yeah, and there's the god. What did we end up getting him with? Uh, oh, did he have returning on the god? That would have been a mistake. <laughs> I think that's what happened. I think that's what happened. He probably is just sort of giving up or something. You don't put... The, okay, guys, if you're defending your capital with your god, do not put Ring of Returning on them. Because <laughs> if they get hit at all, they get sent home. But if you lose the cat battle, there's no home to go to. So that was basically an insta-gib on the god. And then we're storming this fort. And this one actually has a sizable army inside. He's got these uh, Fiends of Darkness. He has, you know, we've seen a fair number of vampires from him, a fair number of black hearts, um, and now these Fiends of Darkness. He had a bit of a blood economy going. Gifts of Heaven coming down. Uh, it's actually possible we failed this storming, looking at it now. I'm not feeling very optimistic on our chances here. The, the upside is we've killed the things that have flown out. All the flyers got killed. The wyverns, the fiends of darkness, they're all dead. But we lost the gate battle. Um, the other thing that sucks about being this far back is it's less likely we get our worms targeted by evocations, which we kind of want to go ahead and, you know, get the battle over. Um... But we are thinning out. Yeah, we've routed their front line now, so now we're going to come bustling through. But we don't have many worms left. We have like, I don't know, 50 worms in total? There's a warrior mage up there. This guy's a thug. With a frost brand. And a lot of resistance to physical damage. The mages are asleep with rigor mortis. And as so many fights are won, uh, we win this one just by putting them to sleep. And then poking them with pointy sticks. So uh, in total, we lost uh, 22 Tomb Worms. Not that many, but yeah. We only had about 50 left at the end. Uh, we killed just a tremendous amount of stuff here. 21 Magisters, 12 Magister Arcanes, a Vampire Lord, some Warrior Mages, some Wizards. Uh, Elemental Span would have been really good from them. That's something they might could have done uh, and, and won the day. But uh, I don't know how many gems they had left at this point. Uh, yeah. So there we go. A uh, bunch of items we got. A bunch of lightless lanterns. This was a, a research base. So um, with all that, let's take a look at our position. We've taken this throne from them, the Golden Throne. Um, we've taken this place, which has the Castle Arcanum, which is a really great site. Gives access to wizards. These are really good for giving like the Water Fire Cross Path, which is really rare. Um, and then also, I mean, all these cross paths, which are really nice with fire. Um, so that's really good. The warrior mages are kind of good thugs, too. They don't have quite as many paths, I don't believe. But, um, you know, a, a better chassis in a way. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this is a really good site. Um, and we've taken Man's Cap, which has uh, the Forests of Avalon, which gives us uh, two nature and two air, which are very much welcomed. And uh, we're basically done here with our war and ready for the next thing. Uh, here was where Kalem stormed. Kalem's moving on to this. Uh, we're coming over here to take this this turn, and I believe the, the droopy little claim from Kalem is this region. So, um, yeah. 
Uh, lots of Arco stuff on our border. But I can't, I can't remember if, I don't know. Somebody probably that was in the game remembers better than me. I don't think Arco and I had a non-aggression pact ever again for the rest of the game. So I don't think we made peace. But I think we agree at this point with Calum deciding to take this stuff so that he's close enough for this throne to throne rush. I think we kind of at least talked about it and we're like, let's deal with the birds first. Um, and we kind of had the feeling, Caleb has naps with me and with other people, but we kind of had the feeling those naps weren't going to be respected. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the state of mind everybody is in. Um, and what's interesting too is we're all very worried about it, but none of us have seen, some of us have seen like the golden armada of all the Caleb mages, but I haven't. So I'm very much in the dark of like, what is he, like, oh, I've seen Omish armies before of like him putting together demons and knights and all these things. I'm like, okay, kind of seeing like, this is what Ulm is. I haven't really gotten to see what Caleb is in terms of how this player is putting together armies. So kind of anxiously awaiting that. Uh, and I think that's it for this episode. Uh, what we have coming up, um, we're going to be watching as Ulm finishes off his war. And Caleb indeed is going to go for a throne rush. So we are going to get to see that in action. And that's going to be very exciting. Uh, and then uh, after that's over, people are going to try to kill me. So that's going to be fun too. So uh, a lot to look forward to. Tune back in uh, next episode. Be turned 68 and we'll see you then.